Well, I want to show you where Trevor Bauer, at the end of revealing kind of these, you know, very alarming uh, revelations about this court case, I want to show you where Trevor Bauer has a moment of self-reflection, and hopefully that can show us where these ideas are coming from and what we can do about them. So check it out. In evaluating my life over the recent months, uh, it's clear that I've made some poor choices, particularly in regards to the people that I've chosen to associate with. But I am not the person that this woman, her lawyers, and certain members of the media have painted me to be. Now that kind of self-reflection is so rare in our society for an individual to say my decision making is the reason that I put myself in this position in the first place is, is really, I think, striking and really noble. We'll talk about that kind of more deeply uh, as we get into it. But, but here's the, the point is that all of this could have been avoided. And real love helps people avoid these kind of things. It helps people avoid the pits that they're walking into. And it tells them before they get to the pit, hey, there's a pit ahead. And then if inevitably that individual falls into the pit, we don't come over to the side of the pit and just lean over and just say, hey, you know what? I accept you and love you down there in that pit. You know, uh, I, I just want you to know that I tolerate all of your decision making down there in that pit. No, real love actually drops a rope down into the pit and pulls the person out of it. It doesn't draw circles around the pit. And, and isn't interested in just simply drawing lines around the pit either. That's not even the point. The point is, is that we give the help that is necessary to the person who is suffering and struggling. And there is no doubt that one of the reasons our culture is struggling so much is because there is a decline in religious observance. Now, to prove that, I just want to try to show you a couple of things. We've been told for the longest time that a decline in religious observance um, is is a good thing. A atheists have been trying to peddle this, this lie for a while now. Um, and uh, this lie has actually been working. So for a relatively short amount of time, we've started to see the West decline in religious attendance. Um, and we hear from atheists that that's a good thing, that it's better for society, that we'd much rather live in a society where religion wasn't even a thing. Of course, we're not going to tell people they can't do whatever they want to do because we have to believe in freedom until we get power. And then we'll do what you know, what Stalin did and try to get rid of all religious people. But uh, so we can't tell them they can't do it. But I mean, we all know, right? If we just didn't live in a religious society, all this would be better. Um, well, I, I want to get to that claim in just a moment. And I just want to bring it back to Trevor Bauer real quick. Do you think that we would be so quick as a society to lie about people, to extort them for money if religion was still a facet of our society? Now, of course, there's always been liars, but odds on favorite is if we were a more religious society, that would be different. So here's a clip from Jordan Peterson and an atheist where they discuss whether or not religion is good for society. Check it out. Now, at last, the majority uh, are not religious. It's just tipped over in the latest polls. And in fact, coming up on the train from Devon today, I got chatting with various people. The assumption that I find here, I don't know what it's like in Canada, is I always start with assuming someone's an atheist and it nearly always turns out to be there. Oh, yeah, all that religion stuff, you know. It's very, very common in this country. Now, we have not descended into being a terrible country. Um, we have, you know, yes, we have our problems. We're but still fairly early on in the... In the experiment, I suppose, of ditching well, God. Well, like about yes. 10 years. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I will await with interest and hope I live long enough to see. But then if we look at many of the Scandinavian countries, which are way ahead of us in, the, in that move, they have wonderful um, uh, health systems, um, welfare state, support for people out okay. of work well, and so on. I, I'd be really interested in hearing your response to all this then, Jordan. Yeah, well, I see a university professor. Let, let's take Dawkins, for example. He's He's, he's the sovereign, rational individual, but there's a, there's a wall around him. That's the wall, let's say, of his university. And then outside the university, there's the wall of the town. And outside the town, there's the wall of the, of the state and the wall of the country. And there's just these concentric rings that are protecting him. And he can stand in the middle and say, well, I'm divorced from all that. It's not under, it doesn't undergird me. It's like it undergirds you to a degree that you can't possibly imagine. And you're, you're, you're living on on the, well, really it is, it is the resources that have been gathered painfully and bloodily in the past and saying, well, we can just detach ourselves from that and float off. It's like, no, you can't. You don't understand what you're talking about. God, I love that man. Look, 
I'd argue that Christianity still undergirds the West, not only in Europe, but also in America in a multitude of ways, whether we know it or not. But we are seeing the beginning of the cracks of what secularism will do to our society if allowed to have free reign. And the excesses of the Me Too movement are just at the beginning. I mean, honestly, what do we think will happen when moral frameworks become autonomously defined and we just come up with our own morality on the fly and, and it's self-defined? Do you think everyone is just going to develop a coherent moral framework overnight and that it's going to work in a society where we all have to live with each other? And if they do develop a consistent moral framework, will it look any different than what Christianity has been preaching for years? I mean, even Richard Dawkins himself had to admit when pressed that he borrows his morality from Christianity. What's your moral code? I suppose it's a version of the golden rule. So as the West experiences a steep decline in religious adherence, it's time to judge the results. It's time to be honest. Anyone paying attention knows the answer. Removing a standard of truth from our cultural consciousness has paved the way for arbitrary and ridiculous morality. Your truth and my truth and centering my lived experiences code for I am just full of it. Maybe morality is dependent upon belief in a higher being after all. And all of our claims to be good without God are kind of total nonsense. Listen, atheist Tom Holland said this as well. It's not just me. He said this, Christianity revolutionized sex and marriage, demanding that men control themselves and prohibit all forms of rape. Christianity confines sexuality within monogamy. It is ironic, Holland notes, that these are now the very standards for which Christianity is derided in the culture. Christianity elevated women. In short, Christianity utterly transformed the world. In fact, Holland points out that without Christianity, the Western world would not exist. So the, the end of the day, the whole point is this, is that the Lindsay Hills of the world exist less when our world is steeped in Christian morality. But there's a second point that we have to bring out too. And that is that the Trevor Bowers of the world don't exist, or at least exist less when Christianity is at the helm. Now, I already showed you his clip of him kind of having a moment of self-reflection, but he doesn't go far enough. He doesn't actually realize that the thing that he needs the most is a religious framework to keep him morally accountable. We all need some kind of framework to hold us morally accountable for our decision making. You know, far be it from me to become a victim blamer here, but I have to tell you that Trevor Bauer, if he didn't have the kind of laissez-faire sexual moral values that he has, he would not, not have found himself in this situation. There are plenty of high profile men who are not cavorting around with floozies at clubs who don't have this kind of issue. Casual sex with random women that don't have self-respect is always a bad decision. And it always has been. Not only for like genital health, but also for your mental and your financial health. Trevor Bauer figured this out and he would still be a dodger. It wouldn't have to have spent millions of dollars on attorney fees if he hadn't thought two nights with a woman that has no self-respect was worth it. No man deserves to be accused of doing something that he hasn't done, don't get me wrong. But there's a good lesson here for all men. The way the Bible has civilized society has more merit than we give it credit. Keep it in your pants until you put a ring on it. And that brings us to kind of a second and final point here. There's a lot of online conversation right now about trad wives and about whether or not uh, a man should believe in marriage now simply based upon the fact that there's so much divorce and there's so many women like Lindsay Hill out there. Is the, the institution of marriage, has it been exposed for the, uh, for the flawed institution that it actually is? And a lot of red pill conservatives have gone online to suggest that marriage just doesn't work for us in society any longer. It might've worked for past generations, but it doesn't work for us today. Well, I have some news for you. Sure, the kind of women that are out there today may make you afraid of getting married, but Marriage is still the best institution for raising children. And unless you want the species to totally just diminish and die, then I would encourage you to get back to investing in and finding what good and healthy marriage looks like. You can't call yourself a red-pilled conservative and then endorse the same kind of policies, uh, uh, the genocidal policies of those on the left. 
And the reality is, is that this is way overblown. Sure, the Lindsay Hills of the world exist, but my God, boys, go to church and find yourself a good Bible-believing women. They still exist out there. It's totally overblown that all women have bought into second wave and third wave feminism, and there's no way that you can find a good woman anymore. If you think a good woman can be found at a club and a good woman can be found who's willing to hook up with you after one night of drinking, well then you have a very flawed definition of what a good woman actually is. No good woman actually does that kind of stuff. So go out, start putting yourself in a position to succeed, and then you'll find marriage might actually work for you once you find a woman with morals and values. And I would highly encourage that you potentially look for a woman that actually has some Christian moral values, not just somebody that says they're a Christian, but actually like maybe a practicing Christian. I don't know, I know, crazy thought. So you just got done watching a small excerpt of a much larger episode. You can find the link to that full episode down below in the description of this video. So you definitely want to check that out because if you like that clip, you'll like the much larger episode. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and click that little bell to be notified when great new episodes of Indie Thinker come your way. Thanks for watching.